Mike check one two, Mike check one two. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinga show with me, your host, Agostino Zinga. This is episode number two six seven dos siete seis dos siete seis, right? Dos siete seis dos seis seis. Dos he says. I don't know. Whatever it is in Spanish, my Spanish is obviously quite rusty. I haven't been doing it in a while. But welcome back to the podcast and the show. If you're watching via the YouTube, smash that like, click subscribe, come back again. Listen via the podcast app. Five star review helps the show to get spread like butter or Nutella or whatever else you like to spread on your body or your bread. Hope you guys are well. You good? Good. Amazing. It's Friday morning, coming at you live and direct from somewhere in Stratford. It's horrible out there from the right hand side of my screen or where I am, probably left hand side where you're watching it. So don't watch that. If you're not watching via YouTube already, what are you doing? Click the little link on the description and check out my show on YouTube. Tune in, tune out. But yeah, it's a dreary day, man. Dreary Friday. It's fast approaching Christmas, I think. I haven't been to central London in a while. Um luckily. I've um, I've been quite lucky in the jobs I've had, really, and I think the last few years where some of them haven't worked out that well. Some of them have been a bit underwhelming. Some of them have had founders like Nicholas Oliver, who you know were essentially scamming their employees and didn't pay them for close to a year. But most of the places I've been at didn't require me to go to Central London. That's been a blessing because there was a time in my life where I essentially lived in Central London. This must have been the early two thousands when I was knee deep in crooked tongues going on forums, arguing with 30-year-old men about trainers, right? Doing that kind of cool thing. I wonder where those 30-year-old men are now. Those men that were arguing with me about trainers and wanted to fight me at meetups and shit. Man, little niche subcultures are so weird, so bizarre. Imagine, that was a thing back in the day, right? Arguing with guys, men were arguing with you. And that was, I think, I have to, I have to give myself some credit or give our generation some credit. I think we must have been the first generation of like new kids on the scene because I remember when we got in there. Imagine, let me think about it. Yeah, you know Aaron Bondorov. How old is Aaron Bondorov? Let me Google how old he is because I think that kind of represents the generation that I was in just under, right? Aaron Bondorov is probably like 38, I'm assuming, right? And the Bondorov age. Let's see how old he is. Well, I'm not seeing him around in ages, but yeah, Aaron Bondorov is not 29, that's for sure. Okay, if Aaron Bondorov was 29 in 2008, so he's about what 30 38 40 yeah 40 years old so i guess at that age that that's what some of those guys were yeah they were like 29 at that time and i must have been 19 21 or something along those kind of lines and they were arguing with us on the internet about shoes and that was a thing that people did about the scene and stuff and again i simply for those guys because i think we were the first young kids coming through and we were coming through with the internet we were coming through with social media we were coming through with hunger we obviously saw an easy way out to get out of going to the university and studying, right? Because no one wants to study. No one wants to go to bloody uni and do that kind of boring stuff. If you find a solution to get out of it and resell shoes for a living, like, why wouldn't you do it? So I guess we were so desperate to get in, it kind of shook up the industry and people were getting nervous and didn't want to move or get out of the way. And usually, most industries are like that anyway, isn't it? It's very odd. It's not very usual. It's not likely that someone in the scene is going to step aside and let the kids take over. Why would you do that? You've got the cushiest job in the world, right? Think of somebody like Fraser Cook. Why would he step aside and let a kid take his job? Why Why would you do that? You've got a job essentially that you make up your own hours, you travel the world, you get to collaborate with all your heroes, you get to sm- you get to kind of shake hands and kiss babies and seal collaboration deals, introduce people to you know future collaborators, you get to become the glue that holds the scene together, the quote-unquote linchpin. You, you get to become like the Danny Says of streetwear, no one would give that up just because, oh, you should hand it over to the kids. It's up to the kids to go up to the oldies and bloody snatch that baton out of their hand and just sprint down the road like they're, you know, jacking them on the street or something. That's what you're meant to do. So I had sympathy for them in that regard. But it was horrible, man. I remember it was just bizarre arguing with men on the internet and seeing them in real life thinking, this guy could be my uncle. Like, this is ridiculous. But, you know, here we are, man. But I think our generation, are a bit, we're a bit more chill. I don't necessarily mind the kids nowadays. I think they're doing their thing quite well. I have a lot of respect for the guys on the basement. I love that community. I love the fact that when some of them, when someone gets lost on a train or doesn't have any money to go home, people chip in and send them paper funds to get a ticket home or they help each other out with, with them relationship stuff. They post stuff about their achievements. I think there's a couple of dudes on there who are professional footballers who will post a picture of themselves at their debut in a football game. Just like loads of nice, wholesome male energy on there young guys energy right and i love it and it's and it's definitely a little safe sanctuary they're built on the basement it's just full of it's just for guys under a certain age who are from a certain background 
who come on, who who are from a certain era in kind of streetwear and sneakers. I love it, man. I think those guys are doing the best thing ever. Even this Lucky Collaboration they put out recently, the Nike Dunk they did back in the day. I'm a big fan of everything they do. And I think for the most part, most most of my people, most of the guys in my generation, we don't really hate on kids. We just let them live and do their thing. We just move on. Um, even the Supreme stuff, which I'm f- kind of thinking or kind of come to realization that maybe I've, I've been aged out of Supreme. Supreme sort of kicked me out uh, with the stuff that they're doing now. They're purposely aiming towards the young kids. I don't have any hate for that either because I can just imagine if you're 16 years old and Supreme are putting out a Stone Island jacket, you know, the 17th one in a weird colorway, you're going to be coming all over yourself to get that jacket, in it, Right? If they make a, a Nike collaboration full of leather and swooshes and, you know, big logos everywhere, you'll be on it like Sonic, right? A Dead Press collaboration. You probably don't even know who Dead Press are, but you're just going to buy it and then Google them later. Because I remember that's what we used to do. When we used to watch skate videos and there was a cool soundtrack, you'd find out what the soundtrack was on the part that you was interested in by going on a forum. And then you just go and listen to a whole back catalogue and then pretend on the forum like you were up on it. Oh, yeah, I know about the Smiths. Like, I found out about the Smiths through skateboarding. Like, legitimately found out about Smiths through skateboarding. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't find out about them regardless of that. And then had to pretend on sidewalk forum that I knew about them from beforehand. Um, so yeah, I don't have any hate towards that. Oh, I think it's brilliant. I think it's great to see, but I can just imagine how much of a shock to the system it must have been for the generation above me when I was coming up to see all of us just, you know, queuing. Because I think we were even the first to really queue overnight. It wasn't a thing back then because there wasn't that big of a demand, right? I think of an Aaron Bondros generation. There wasn't that, people weren't queuing as much as they were when I got in. They were queuing, but not as much like the demand wasn't that big. The subculture of streetwear or sneakers wasn't as big as it as it is now. Um, I remember the biggest queues we used to see were definitely in Asia. China and Japan were definitely the biggest queues, but mostly, again, they had smaller accounts, not a lot of people buying the stuff. And in general, the queue is sort of like the way to shop in Japan, right? They've been queuing since the 80s, you know what I mean? They love a good queue out there. Um, and they're fairly orderly. They're fairly orderly. There's no, like, you know, masses of McDonald's breakfast piled up in a corner somewhere which we used to always do but i miss that man i miss that it's so much fun queuing in the morning i was like, queuing really late at night leaving my house at 11 in the, at night and then I, my, oh, god bless my parents man my parents used to let me leave my house to go and queue up in front of a store that they didn't even know existed in somewhere in central london with a camping chair right and my warmest jacket like a vape snowball jacket or something and then just go and sit out there and chill I wish actually when once I went out there, I wish I had, I wish I had this jacket. Have you seen this jacket from um, the Matthew Williams and Nike collaboration? I wish I had this when I was going out there and doing my bits and pieces. This would have been very, very warm. This jacket that Matthew Williams has done. It's the second one in it, right? Second collection, whatever. I think it's the third collection, actually. It's the Nike MMW, uh, what's it called? The downfill jacket. It's 680 quid, though. For a Nike jacket, it's a bit nuts, but it looks fucking gorgeous. It's so warm. You know, the Arsenal Winger jacket, the big, long one, but that looks bad, isn't it? This would be perfect if you're outside of a, a sneaker store somewhere trying to get your, you know, making sure you secured your place. Look how good that looks, sir. Huh? It reminds me of all the old school Nike NSW stuff that we used to have at 94 when I worked there. Like, I would have been all over this in the shop. But I don't, I'm not sure about this strap on the inside of it, though. Why would you, like, imagine trying to carry this on your back like this. It's just like, you have to be a certain height, too, because this would be dragging all over the floor. Oh, he's got gloves on the inside. Oh, buddy. This jacket is buff, isn't it? So nice. But yeah, I'll be, be all over this, man. It's got weird... Oh, look. They've got the pins on it still from the styling. They haven't taken them off. <laughs> Lols. This guy's so skinny, he can't fit into tights. That's a madness, isn't it? <laughs> Being a model is mad. But it looks good on him, though. But I, w- I wouldn't have the strap on it. Here. Like, it just looks a bit strange. Has it got the same buckle that Alex usually wears? Yeah, they have. But yeah. Um, big up the Q days, man. The old Q days was the best. I flipping loved it. I miss it so much. I wish I could go back to that. Um, era again someday soon but you know unfortunately we've moved on now we're all older we've all got full-time jobs and queuing now would be a bit of a ridiculous thing to do unless it's something that you had to queue for and nowadays if you want to, basically the queue is just raffles and stuff in it now isn't it a raffle is a queue putting your name into a, a hat and then giving your card deals over having a card company do a what you call it do a credit card check or a funds check on your account because i've got monzo so whenever you enter your card deals into end or something where they have to like take a payment in order for you to win um it got it's just i imagine what, what what these retailers must do with the funds beforehand do they get the funds use it for something else leverage your funds to get a loan and then refund it back to your account like how long does it take to come back in i wonder if you don't win the shoes um but yeah mad times man. mad times I, I miss that era i really do I made some good friends but that's a good thing i i, I really 
um, saver for that from that era. So friendships I had from there, I still have them from now. Maybe apart from two or three people who I wouldn't care if they died tomorrow, but for the most part, everyone else I'm quite friendly with. I'm quite cool with. I'm alright with. Um, if I see them around, it'll be like you know, I, you know, it'll be like back when we were 21 again, which is great. You've got a lot in common. You know, spending 17 hours outside of a shop somewhere, you get to know someone really, really well very quickly. Um, so good era, man. Good era. So if you're kids out there and you're still you know, you're taking part in streetwear culture now or sneaker culture, savor it, man. All these complex comms, all these sort of stuff, like go to them, attend them with a big heart, uh, try and meet as much people as you can and savor it because that, that era will fl- go by in a flash and then you'll be like, damn, man, I remember when I didn't have any care in the world and I used to splurge a grand and a half on stuff every other week, do you know what I mean? Like you'll, and then once you get older and you have rent to pay, those days of blowing a grand on a couple pairs of shoes to resell would be far, far, far gone. But yeah, pick up that era. What a good, good time. Anyway, Action and Zinger Show episode number 267. We're in a reminiscing um, <laughs> mood today, I think you'll be able to tell. I'm your host, Agostino. This show is centered mostly around streetwear, mostly around culture, mostly around art, mostly around music and everything else in between. Um, I broadcast this live on YouTube and obviously via the podcast app. If you're watching via the YouTube, welcome. Hello, how are you doing? If you like what you hear, click that sma- click that like button or smash that like button, click subscribe or click that like button and smash subscribe. One or the other way you want to do it. If you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five star review. Let me know what you think of the show. Leave a little note um, so people can have, you know, find the show, discover it. And also it's a nice for you to go back and read. Oh, look, I read that. You know what I mean? It's all good, lovely. It's all good. But uh, yeah, hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are good. It's Friday. I know some of you weekend warriors are looking forward to it and you're super pumped, super happy. I'm not. It's just another day for me. Um, you know, I'm not really that bothered about it, but uh, I know some of you guys are. So enjoy your Friday. Um, live well, be happy, but bloody hell, it's muggy out there. Super muggy. But anyway, let's get on with it. Let's go. We've got so much topics to talk about. Loads of good things I want to get into. And what better way to start than with this little video here from another YouTuber, right? YouTube Rewind is going on now, but I don't really care about that. I know you guys don't either. But this Olivia Jade um, interview is very interesting. I'm sure you guys are aware of the whole Olivia Jade thing, right? Um, two parents or two co-stars from Full House were allegedly, were kind of um, accused of essentially, what, bribing a university in America to make sure their kids got into the school by doctoring the records and making it look like they were on the rowing team, all this sort of mad stuff, right? One one defendant um, was in prison for 14 days, got released early, took a punishment in stride, said, I'm sorry, took full ownership of it and people have forgotten about it. The other one has been a bit more steadfast and has rejected any kind of plea bargain and essentially wants to take it to court. And of course, if you know anything about the American judicial system, if you don't take their plea bargain, they will make an example of you. So she's going to be made an example of, and unfortunately in the, um, you know, with, when, when these issues do come about, there are always um, some, you know, innocent victims or quote unquote innocent victims that get destroyed as well. And none other than Olivia J. This young girl was the daughter of one of the defendants. And she, before this, I had no idea. She was a very prominent YouTuber, a very popular YouTuber. Again, what I mentioned earlier before uh, the whole Peloton ad and in terms of just the, um, that Chiara Casarigi woman, that Italian girl that's big on Depop. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get why girls are into following vloggers or YouTubers or uh, influencers who are clearly who clearly come from very very wealthy families. I don't get the interest. I really don't understand why people follow that sort of stuff. Kardashians, I understand to show blah blah blah, but why would you follow an influencer, a girl pretending to be like your average, you know, next door, your girl next door? She's not. She's got a G wagon and she's sixteen years old. That isn't girl next door. Do you know what I mean? Like that car is probably worth more than people's salaries that they're watching it day in day. And that's her daily driver, right? That's her like standard car. That's her weekend getaway car to Malibu or some stuff. I just don't understand why girls are into watching. Because I don't think you could get the equivalent thing for a dude. A dude will get bored of that really quickly. Like watching a really rich dude gallivant like um i can't remember the last time i watched a gianni vachi video you remember that guy the most interesting guy on the internet like it was a time and period where i was obsessed with watching his clips on the instagram then i just got bored of it and i'm sure that's the same thing that happens to like um dan belzerian right he probably recycles through he probably cycles through his fans probably there's a group of people that hang around and watch and watch all his content and click like but for the most part people dip in and out of his content because you know you know you're going to get with dan belzerian but with girls they, they kind of stick by these extremely rich um white girls who are like you know 
they live a completely different reality to most people in the world. I don't understand it. But anyway, so um, she's a young girl. I feel sorry for her in that regard. But I'm also very hesitant to feel sorry for her because I'm, I don't believe that you can be uh, a daughter of a high-flying Hollywood elite person like this person that's accused of it. I forgot her name. Laurie something maybe is her name. I don't think you can be a daughter of that woman and not know what's happening behind your back. Because I think it was uh, reported once that she was against going to university or going to college because she wanted to pursue her influencer um, life. You know, I think she had a makeup line in the works that got cancelled, of course, due to the bad press. And she went to continue being a YouTuber. She's pretty popular. She has like, what's the video on here? She has 1.95 million subscribers. And of course, this positive video has already got like half, four, four and a half million views on it. So she's doing fairly well on YouTube, right? She's on her way up to, you know, she's probably already a full-time YouTuber. She wants to be, especially outside of whatever money she gets from her parents. Not watching her pockets, but just calling a fact a fact. So she was obviously against going to college, as any young girl would do. But as any responsible parent, you'd probably be like, no, at least get an education to this level so that you have something to fall back on, quote unquote. So it's unlikely that she had no knowledge at all that her parents were, you know, essentially trying to doctor her results in order to make her uh, be successful. I, I don't think that's possible. So it makes this whole apology thing weird. But then also um, I'm thinking she's what, 18, 17, 18? Should she be punished forever for the actions of her parents, her overzealous, um, ambitious parents who are essentially trying to live vicariously through her? Should she be punished for that? I don't think so. I don't think it's fair. But this apology video is very funny. The amount of jump cut she has on a two-minute video is just insane. But also, I appreciate the sentiment behind it. Let's quickly play it for you guys. Hey, it's Olivia Jade. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Obviously, I've been gone for a really long time. And as much as I wish I could talk about all of this, it's really hard for me to say this just because I know that it's something that needs to be addressed. It's just, unfortunately, which is also why I didn't know exactly when I should come back to YouTube, um, but the reason for that is just because I'm legally not allowed to speak on anything going on right now. She's allowed to speak on it, really, legally. There's no law against it, but I'm sure the lawyers are advised against it because her mum was dumb enough to reject the plea bargain. So anything she says could get misconstrued, could get pulled apart. You know, people like TMZ are just waiting, they're sitting like vultures waiting to pick apart a statement, so it's probably wise for her not to say anything. But yeah, um, I feel kind of sorry for her, I'm not going to lie, man. Even if she is aware of what happened, I'm sure she doesn't have any possible. Like, if you're a kid at that age, and you know what you're gonna do, defy your parents and run away, and then they cut the purse strings, and then you can't pay the fucking fuel on your G wagon anymore, you're gonna just go along with it. But she probably knew best. The idea of her going doing a YouTube thing full time, especially, you know, what's weird too. She has Hollywood parents who are in the entertainment industry. Why wouldn't they think her being a YouTuber was probably a better route to go down and trying to go to USC? What benefit she gonna get from having a college education, getting into not getting into debt but like spending her time going there for what just so she could be just so she could make a and again that's how you know this whole thing was just so she can make her parents proud it wasn't because of her education which is the sad part of it that's the other part that's the thing that a lot of people don't have sympathy for for rich people like imagine being a rich kid and having parents who are very controlling so you might have your own passions that you're into things that you want to get involved in outside of you know living this lavish lifestyle but your parents are so hell-bent on maybe proving uh, maybe justifying their money i don't know what it is but because it's like i don't get why a high flying media a high flying entertainment person in hollywood want their kid to go to college anyway especially if they've got a, a hustle on the side that's generating some traction that's generating some income for them especially because i can imagine she could pay her own bills solely from youtube probably if she's smart enough and she has enough media um she has enough brands reaching out to her, especially even just on Instagram. I'm sure she could do it. These, she's probably not fighting it out as much some of these quote unquote huge Instagram models are, but she's probably doing pretty well. But her parents wanted to go to USC, so what? So they can show her off at a, at a cocktail party that she's not even going to be at. A part of me is like, should I come back to YouTube right now? Because I, it's been so long, and I actually really, really miss it. Like oh, I genuinely miss filming. I feel like a huge part of me is just not the same because that jump coming not the same like what 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 could have been missing there she was she um in for that long not the same but fair enough to her man fair enough something but yeah, that i'm really passionate about it's something i really like to do but you know what credit to her for uh, apologizing in two minutes and not making it 13 right or 27 like big ups for her in that regard that's really credit that's really commendable because there's too many these youtubers who just let the fucking video go on and on and on because essentially she didn't say she said 
a lot of things without saying anything, but at least it's two minutes. It's not, you know, half an hour, 45, 50. She's not crying as well. That's good. She's not holding a pet in her arms or in her lap um, to gain sympathy. That's good. Just all those things make it very, very wholesome. Uh, but I also didn't know I debated for like seven or eight months. Like, well, if I can't talk about it, is there a point in coming back and not being able to say anything? I want to come back because I want to come back. There's no wow. point Brain in buster. me just talking for 10 minutes to the camera about how I wish I could say something when I really can't. Good girl. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for your patience or if Good you girl. stuck around for nine months just waiting. I really appreciate it. This is the best I can do and I want to move on with my life and not trying to be in a selfish way. Uh, it's so hard because I'm not trying to like make this about me or like how I've been because it, it's not the point of this. Though I'm terrified to make this video and to come back, I know that I also want to start taking smaller steps in the right direction. You know what, what happens when um, if a mum gets to go, goes to prison though? That's going to be brutal, isn't it? Like what happens then? But maybe, she, maybe the lawyers are confident enough that she won't get any prison time, but I doubt it, because the other woman did, isn't it, right? What's her name? What's Olivia Jade's mum's name? Olivia Jade mum. Who is that? Is that Laurie McLaughlin? Who's that one? One of them is Laurie something. Oh, yeah, sorry. Laurie McLaughlin. She was the one that was doing... She was taking fucking autographs and posing for selfies on her way to court. She just not give a flying fuck. I kind of rate that, though. She's a boss. She was not giving an F. She said, I'm not guilty. Um... <laughs> she was taking pictures outside the court. Let's let's look at her pictures. Yeah? Let's let's quickly see this. I'll shoot and check you guys out. <laughs> look at the differences in her appearances, right? Of her coming out of court. So this is her, I think, smiling the first couple of times, right? Waving to the crowds and shit, right? Being smirk and funny. And then look at her now. Look at the difference in the demure. Look at that. Look at the faces. Yeah, the the husband in the back was always nervous. Or whoever this guy is with the little dimple on his chin, he was very nervous from the beginning. The wife was trying to put on a good face, and now look at her. She knows she fucked up. Like that's a face of somebody who knows that they fucked up. Um, they says here that she was what they're going to face impossible prison time. Entertainment tonight makes sense though. But again, if she. Ugh, God damn it, man. God damn it, these rich people. What is wrong with you? Really? Um, the articles of the following. Nancy Grace has advice for Laurie McClurk as she faces prison time. Nancy Grace is offering... Oh, we don't care what Nancy Grace thinks. Fuck off. Uh, what is Laurie McClurk going to do? What's, what's happening with him? Is she going to face prison time or not? Uh, 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 Olivia J. Chest. Look at that headline. Laurie Goffman daughter shows off her chest. No, she doesn't. She's just posing for a fucking picture so these websites are horrible isn't it um let's see Mary McCook in prison let's see what's happening here is she facing any prison time christmas in prison national inquirer dying to avoid prison okay we don't know anything it's all gossip no one knows no one cares we move on with this story um but yeah that was the most interesting part of it i think overall so welcome back to youtube olivia jade hope you all do okay hope your mom doesn't go to prison hope your mom doesn't go to pen you know as i say the kids say back in the day. But anyway, let's move on here. What do you have to talk about? Oh, um, shitty startup founders. Shock, horror, surprise. So, news broke the other day. I think yesterday, actually, via The Verge. Verge uncovered this story. Um, great journalism from them. Where they essentially exposed the founder of Away Luggage. The luggage company that's been all over the social media feeds for the most part because they've sent out a bunch of products to YouTubers, to some influencers, and got them to make some early reviews. And essentially, it's been built as a kind of affordable version of Remoa, right? In that regard, they're kind of, you know, banking on the idea that a lot of young people are opting for experiences over, pose over kind of material possessions and wanting to show off their, you know, um, idyllic holiday locations. And in comes away luggage with a really kind of cool, hip concept of luggage and promoting it to young kids or young adults people that are you know suddenly trying to you know fly in the nest and you know seeking out new adventures all on paper looks amazing all on paper looks good they've got i think a store in shoreditch in london where, where i live somewhere i'm pretty sure and probably locations probably on the place but they've been growing very rapidly over the last few months i would say so this story came out of the left field. I think if you've worked there, you probably know this already. But again, it's no surprise. I think every startup I've worked out for the most part has had this kind of toxic element to it. I think in most parts, because it's unregulated and there is like little to no 
barrier to kind of for you to start a startup or to get involved in running your small business there's no real checks and balances involved for the most part if you have the money if you have the means if you have the determination and you have the manpower you can do just about anything but it also means you can get away with murder especially especially if your product is successful if your product is a success and it does well similar to steve jobs you read a documentary he was a terrible human being but you know an amazing icon innovator in his field but as a boss as a co-worker you wouldn't want to, you know, you wouldn't want to spend, you wouldn't want to be caught at the bar with him on a night out, really, you want to work stuff now out. He's not the best guy to hang around, with, especially if you've got a deadline coming up. But the problem with startups and the problem with most businesses, even just in, in, in life, even in sports, right? The player in your team is the most talented, but also who takes some, cuts the most corners, goes out, gets fucked up, does a line of coke off a stripper's ass, is probably going to be permitted to do what he wants outside of um, training if he performs on the pitch nine times out of ten because you're banking on those nine times out of ten coming you know during a championship run a trophy run league table finish he's going to really make the difference so you're you're willing to sacrifice his extracurricular activities for the betterment of the overall team same happens in startups if your company is successful you ipo big you sell a lot of units you're appearing everywhere you're expanding all over the globe people will forgive your shitty attitude just check the the, the former we work founder right and same goes to the founder i worked at, at people.io nicholas oliver absolute scumbag absolute um you know um he, what you call a charlatan in that regard hasn't paid anyone for close to a year where we, we worked for him in my previous company where i was at before and he had the same sort of attitude the same sort of toxic sort of personality so um this article here kind of uh, details the whole experience. I'm going to read it out and kind of, you know, try not to get angry with some bits and pieces. But, you know, we'll go as, at a slow pace and try and go from there. So this article is from The Verge. I put it up on here to get to check out. I love the actual icon of it. You know, loads of away luggage is piled up into a sad face emoji. Um, it says here, emotional baggage, the headline from The Verge. I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out yourselves, but just quickly read through it. A waste founder saw the vision of travel and inclusion, but former employees say it masks a toxic work environment, right? And another thing as well that's been really interesting about this whole fallout of this whole story is that the CEO, the founder of, of sorry, of Away Luggage is a, is a woman. So some people have had a horrible take on social media where they're essentially saying that, oh, it's unfair that people are pointing out that she's a woman. But it's not because what it should illustrate is that toxic behavior and startups doesn't um, is genderless, right? It doesn't care if you're a man or a woman. That behavior exists all everywhere in all most people. And, you know, um, it's probably also a good thing because it goes to show that some, especially some feminists who are like hell bent on rebalancing, kind of, you know, readdressing, readdressing the kind of power imbalances in quote unquote in corporate work environments or work environments in general need to come to the realization that it's not the power thing corrupts everybody it doesn't corrupt just men it doesn't make um toxic people it doesn't make talk it doesn't only creep up on the dudes in your office i think most people if they're given that level of power that level of influence that level of control over some people will get a bit crazy especially if the company is doing well and this is a good example of it it's not about men and women it's just about getting rid of toxic people in your company point blank and not having environments where staff members are made to feel like shit because they're not willing to work until 11 p.m at night that's not good behavior regardless if you're a guy or a dude no one wants that especially people that are not fully invested in the company and only there to pick up a paycheck which most people are at companies for right so let's continue with the article um a very felt out place um what's that called it um a felt very for very very felt out what a very felt out place at away like many of the executives at the popular direct to consumer luggage brand she's gone to an ivy league college worked at a popular startup and honed an intense work ethic that set her apart from the pack but the higher ups who were almost all white straight and still never gave her the time of day it was very clear who was in the clique nah, but the white thing is well i'm not a fan of this whole stuff it's just a coincidence most of these most of these higher ups as well it's mostly due to because you know they've been around long enough they've, they've kind of known the game they've sussed it out it's gonna take a while for minorities or people who aren't white to kind of you know get a foothold in the industry it's not it's i don't know i can imagine i can remember the first time i worked in startup there were a lot of people that look like me right it's just a new thing people are starting to realize you can get into this field there's a low barrier of entry there's room to grow it's rapidly changing it's going to take time for people to come in and look for it to look um for representation to be you know a bit bit more fair and balanced i don't agree with you know uh companies specifically hiring people based on this color or their gender or where they come from and stuff that's a bit weird but it's going to take time for people to be more aware outside of the quote-unquote general white guy with a hoodie 
on. But it's not necessarily a bad thing if they're all white. It just happens to be one of those kind of things, isn't it? I would say anyway. I'm not just sure. But let's continue anyway. Um, originally, Avery um, had joined because of the brand's popularity. Away luggage, like most people. Um, the hard shot suitcases were everywhere in, in overheads, luggage, carousels, subway ads. But also she wanted to st- believe in the mission. Away promised a lifestyle of inclusion, nice vacations, and nice vacations. Sorry. It was also founded by two women. One person of color and who sought to run the globally minded business. In my mind, it was a trivial product, but the brand is more than just luggage. Avery says it's about travel as the months went by she got closer glimpse at the growth and the imagined the image obsessed culture however she started to feel like the mission was just a smokescreen to get employees to work harder of course it's always like that every startup that is heavily mission based that wants you to believe in this mission and we're going to change the world it's always smokes and mirrors for you to work out um you know ungodly hours bend over give them your asshole and tell them go harder, go faster. None, uh, No exceptions. Most places that are great places to work at will try and get the right fit, the right personality who wants to work at that job and also, as an added bonus, might believe in what they're doing. But the, pers- but the fundamental reason why that person, he or she, will get hired is because they are an expert in their field and that they can perform this given task like exponentially more than anybody else, right? Leaps and bounds better. They can get it done quicker. They can. They have more resources, more contacts, whatever it may be. But the mission thing is secondary. That will come later on. Most companies I've worked for in my life, I've never heard of prior to me working there, apart from maybe two or three. I've never heard they exist and I don't care about them a prior. You, we all do the same thing. We download the app. We go on the website. We check out what they're doing and we try and work out how we can add some value to it then along the line as you're working as you're becoming more passionate about your job you're getting better understanding you're performing well you're an attribute to your teammates you're liking the environment then over a period of time that mission statement that goal that they have will then to be it will then become ingrained in you so much so that you start to believe in it in yourself but to but to suddenly but to think that anyone that starts a job especially someone just looking to get a paycheck is going to suddenly go there because they want to work for you because they believe in the mission is totally stupid and the way they try to convince you otherwise is also super manipulative and just goes to show just how shitty some of these founders can be sometimes nicholas oliver former people.io i'm looking at you as well so it continues um like many the the um when the co yeah so so when it continues here when a co-worker invited every to join a private slack channel called hot topics filled with lgbtq folks and people of color she was relieved to find that she wasn't the only one who felt uncomfortable with the ways purported mission and company culture it was a lot like this person did this not work thing or those people did something insensitive she recalls in other words it was a safe space where marginalized employees could vent which again i think is a bit weird and a bit a bit strange i'm not for the whole like in office gossip thing i used to hate that sort of stuff i think presenting this stuff face front um uh, uh, what putting yourself in the front foot and actually going and speaking about these things directly especially during company all hands um it's thing i think is super important even if it means you risk losing your job i think saying it out loud is the best thing the best remedy it also allows other people who aren't as brave to maybe step up and also back you up but saying it quietly behind the uh, the barriers of slack thinking you're on a private channel is ridiculous as well because I think for as bad as some startup founders are, I think they're not helped by employees who are meek and unable to speak up for themselves. And the first thing they do is contact a journalist. I don't think that's cool either. I think if your founder is toxic and being a bit of a douche, you owe them enough, especially if they're paying your wages, to at least inform them of your displeasure face to face, man to man, woman to woman person to person you should be able to do that and if they then don't adhere or they don't listen or they don't try and make the adequate steps to rectify the situation of course take it to the higher ups go to the media whatever it may be but to go straight to the media after a little bit of of, after a few uncomfortable moments or a, a series of uncomfortable moments without saying anything in public i think that's a bit bad especially the kind of people who are like gossiping about the founder then they come into the kitchen and all of a sudden they keep quiet and suddenly start pretending that that person's their friend oh my god should i get something for lunch do you want to pop out i'm gonna go to the shop do you want something that is that is really snaky and two-faced behavior. You should be able to keep the same energy. If I don't like you at work, even if you're my boss or you're my colleague, you'll know this, right? I'll, I'll let you know for something that you didn't do. But I'm not going to pretend to be your friend one minute and then privately, slack, and privately diss you on a Slack channel. I don't think that's cool. And also, it's not good for the culture. Forget your own personal dislike of the founder. It doesn't really serve anyone any good to know that there is... Because imagine, this is a private slack channel for people that identify as lgbtq plus plus minorities plus anyone else who doesn't want to hang around with the quote-unquote white people what does that do to the people who are white in the office how does that make them feel 
So what, are you pitting themselves against each other? Does it mean if you're a white person who hasn't speak it up, who's not in that channel, are you a sort of, um, are you a, are you an ally to the founder that you don't like? Like, what's happening there? It doesn't, you know what I mean? It just creates more toxic behavior. And again, this is the issue I have with these founders because it always trickles down. See, leadership is the most important thing. That's why that book, Great, Eat, Great Leaders Eat Last, that title is so important because that level of humility um, of letting your kind of employees eat first and then you get whatever's left over, that trickles down because then that means next time, what ha what's, what's the next action that happens after that? When people are cleaning up their plates, your employees are going to start c carrying the plates of their other employees. So that's stacking them up. If they go and get some more, um, you know, some top-ups, I don't think that's making any sense what I'm talking about, but just go with me. When they go and top up in the buffet, they'll offer, they'll ask their friends or their colleagues or their co-workers if they want an extra bit on top because the founder has set the parameters they've trickled it down but if the founder is just the kind of type that just goes and gets their own thing and sits down in the corner somewhere on a laptop that kind of behavior isn't going to be expected in the workplace but anyway let's continue um it was again it was also against company policy um away embrace slack in more ways than one is co-founder jen rubio is engaged to its ceo stuart butterfield but it took things further than most startups employees were not allowed to email each other and direct messages were supposed to be very rare never about work and only for small requests like asking somebody when to eat lunch <laughs> private channels were also to be created sparsely and mainly for work specific reasons so making channels to say to say commiserate about a tough day was not encouraged. That's ridiculous. The whole reason people use Slack is to gossip or to annoy colleagues who they're friends with, right? Or to send gifts and stuff. It's not the most productive platform for you to communicate with people. I never used to check my Slack when I used to work at workplaces. I used to just used to like, like I'd, I'd either not check my Slack or only check the Slack channel of the department I was in. That was it. But there was no chit chat. And I just, it just annoyed me because it just, it just breeded um, people to be... Imagine working in an office where it's open plan workspace. There's no offices, no closed doors. So there's that distraction. Then on top of it, you have Slack. Then on top of it, you have people like me who are loud and noisy. Not the best working environment. So again, I think the announcements and the updates of a team via email that people have to read is fine. That's one requirement. But the Slack thing is another requirement, another dance to do. And then your manager telling you that it's banned, it's prohibited. How are they going to police that? doesn't make any sense. Anyway, continues here. The rules had been implemented in the name of transparency, but employees say that they, they created a culture of uh, intimidation. Of course they would. The constant surveillance, uh, intimidation and constant surveillance. Once when a suitcase was sent out to a customer's incomplete initials, stenciled into a luggage tag, CEO Steph Corey said the person in charge must have been brain dead and threatened to take over the project. Oh, come on, man. That is not... that. Yeah, that I don't like. You remember somebody is trying to harass you for something that you haven't done yet and then they email you then they post it on slack channel on slack channel in front of everyone and do the at here thing so everyone can see it that's some snaky shit like really is some snaky shit um in my experience there it's extensive and relentless it was just it wasn't just co-workers pinning things on other people it came from the execs too Corey was infamous for tearing into people in slack you could hear her typing and you knew something bad was going on <laughs> you know the, 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 <laughs> it's a legend this is the customer experience associate we call caroline yet while her feedback was almost entirely was almost always sent online. Its effects were felt in the real world. Yeah, I hate those kind of founders, managers who are just hide behind their laptop and say the most vicious things behind the screen and then completely air you in real life. Imagine how tense that environment of what must be to work at. And again, this isn't uh, a bad indictment on the way only. It's a bad indictment on the whole entire startup scene because these founders exist in most places. I think most people that you've heard, that you, most of your friends that you know work in startup industry, if you used to ask them if they have any horror stories, they'll be able to list a whole bevy of them, of founders they work for, people they worked with, um, you know, whatever. Everyone's got one or two stories of people they've worked with that done that kind of behavior. And I've got loads of them. And it's funny too, because I wonder what happens when founders see those kind of stories. If Are you narcissistic enough not to think that's you? Or do you think, or you just ignore the story? Like, what do you do? I wonder. Um, Corey was infamous for tearing people, tearing into people on Slack. You could hear her typing and you knew something bad was happening, says the former Finn Caroline. Yeah, well, da, da, da. let's see the Slack channel. Let's quickly read this. This is a Slack channel that she said, monogramming foil. This is Sarah Corey. Um, can we ask one of the account managers to send us photos of the gold following uh, monogrammed luggage tags for approval before they get packaged for fulfillment? And if they can demonstrate a week of 100% perfect luggage tags, they can begin proceeding without our sign off. Oh, that's an. Imagine a founder, right, of a company like Away wanting to sign off monogram tags on a fucking luggage thing. Don't you have enough to worry about that you're micromanaging luggage tags? Really? Like, that's, that's toxic behavior. 
men or women that's ridiculous like oh so annoying it gets me so riled this sort of stuff anyway um she continues again if we need to ask nick himself to um to be sending us the photos to sign off at this point i think we should um if, if whoever is going is doing these luggage tags is brain dead enough to package up and send a tag that clearly has incomplete letters in it seems extremely unlikely to me that that restraining that a retraining on sops if going to be uh sufficient set set of next steps for us to ensure that 100 of our customers are getting perfect luggage tags these are representations of our brand i hate people do that kind of thing those kind of guilt trips go go jump off a cliff company and if a single additional customer gets an imperfect luggage tag i am personally overtaking oversight on the monogramming project from the ops team uh, and someone says absolutely who was just I was just about to write an email to quiet to follow up on our visit and include all that stuff moving forward what an absolute bitch this woman sounds like so when the executive's name inexplicably popped up into hot topics the morning of may 2018 employees knew something was wrong she found out about the channel from erin guau the head of people who said language in the room had made at least one person uncomfortable i thought oh, who snitched on the private channel as well you absolute donut continues i thought damn she's going to see us talking about her some stupid stuff but whatever recalls a former marketing manager named emily she hoped cory could would at least find the conversation funny that hope evaporated the next day when cory began calling people into her office one by one they're flanked by company's head of people and general counsel she told six people they were going to be let go what you've been discriminatory employees remember her saying the stuff you said was hateful and even racist you no longer have a job at this company emily who is a person of color was shocked there was a giant but come on now Talking behind a, 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 a founder's back on a private Slack channel, do you honestly think Slack is private? You have to be under the assumption that all conversation on Slack can be accessed. That's why I just I will just assume so, right? There is a backdoor to everything. Now Slack can deny that and say otherwise, but I will just assume all the conversations on Slack are are monitored or people will be able to tell. Especially the snitch that report is ahead of people, right? There's people that exist. All these doogers are gonna be like, uh, uh, Steph, people are talking about you on Slack. Well, they're gonna be like that. They're gonna be running around. So you got to be careful of that. So to 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 be surprised that you get fired for talking shit about your manager. Mm, that's some that's some that's some uh, millennial hollywood shit in it really in it oh my god i'm so surprised that you're letting me go because i was talking rubbish about you behind someone's back like come on what do you expect you called her a bitch of course she's gonna let you go <laughs> god almighty um so evaporated the uh, you know do you no longer have a job at this company emily who's a person of color was shocked that was jarring three white people telling me i was racist uh you can be racist if you're a person of color by the way bloody hell man where's this idea that people people that are black can't be racist this makes no sense jesus christ like what um the company's head of people erin go identifies as a person of color how do you identify but the fact that emily was unaware at the time okay cool uh whatever let's continue cory disputes cory disputes of ever using the term racist and hate speech although multiple sources confirm that these are the words she used of course you're gonna deny it deny 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 uh, the situation br uh, bruised people morale according to the elite slack logs and in interviews the verge conducted with 14 former workers but it was consistent with the pattern of behavior employees were asked to work exceedingly long hours and limit their paid time off yeah this happens everywhere i've worked in they've always put that pressure on you of booking every this is a good tip for everyone any place that you work in startup wise that says they have um unlimited holidays run if they have unlimited holidays, run for the hills. Unlimited holidays means we're not going to limit your holidays, but don't take too much. Unlimited holidays means you're not going to limit your holidays, but when we need you, you have to come in on the weekends. That's what it means. Don't do it. Companies should have a policy in place of the times of the, the amount of time they allot for you to go away, whether it's you know 25 days, 28 days, whether it's uh, uh you accrue like a month every year that you work there to take like a you know development week or a sabbatical, whatever it may be, but it should be in, in black and white a number, something. This whole unlimited holiday thing is bull crap. What it results in is people coming in at eight, staying until 10, sleeping on bean bags, having a dog in the office, walking around barefooted, playing with a kadonga or kadumba, whatever that thing is, you put your ball in the little cup thing, playing table tennis, futsal, talking about um steve jobs and elon musk every two minutes no work is work home is home there should be a separation between that and, and if anything you'll perform at a much higher level if there is a delineation between you know how long you have to go you, you know how long you have um holiday to visit your parents you're going to give a bit more effort at work as opposed to this you know airy fairy or oh, pay time off for free time it's just some nonsense absolute nonsense anyway it continues here 
Employees were the, 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 the cutthroat culture allowed the company to grow at its hyper speed, developing a cult following with celebrities and millennials alike. Most of the cult following was because they gave away free luggage, to be honest, but also um, it opened a yawning between the gap between how Away appears to its customers and what it's like to actually work there. I've had the same thing in some similar cool companies I won't mention, but how they appear online is definitely not how it is behind closed doors. Behind closed doors is a lot more, you know, bang, 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 headbutts, but in front of people, they're like, oh my God, young people youth we love you um and it continues right the result is a brand consumers love a company culture that people fear and the kada and, and a kadar of former employees who feel burned out and coerced into silence uh they prey on people who who were never cool like me caroline says it's a cult brand and you get sucked into the cool factor because of that they can manipulate you they oh, that's an interesting quote they prey on people who are never cool that's true though that's an entirety of startups though isn't it most startup founders who are dickheads are usually people who would have never been cool in school who would probably get beaten up by people like me like similar like an Nicholas Oliver from people.io um those are the same people that run startups right there's that kind of idea of like you were always picked on in school and suddenly now you have you know you have the fucking key to the world in your hands um but yeah I don't know I don't know if that's that's an insult that's just how it is isn't it geeks run startup world then it? it's no big deal on that one uh it continues luggage is only the beginning yeah right what else can they do what's they're gonna make they're gonna start making hotels like really Get, get fucked anyway Corey and rubio met in 2011 uh while working at a trend direct at trendy direct to consumer eyewear company called warby parker uh the things i learned there about retail markups and downs and wholesaling and licensing blah blah, blah Corey said their aim was to sell first class luggage at a cost coach price but cutting out the middleman and marketing directly to consumers it was a model perfected by brands like dollar shave clubs glossier but i don't see why that's so um, revolutionary aren't most companies doing that anyway if you buy a, a luggage from a shitty shop around the corner isn't that direct to consumer oh they kind of the middleman i don't get why they're so revolutionary mostly from what i can see i don't know if they actually make that much money because most of the stuff that i've seen from away has been stuff that they've seeded free to influencers i've not seen anyone purposely go out and buy an away luggage people just usually buy really expensive luggage at Ramoa or buy really shit stuff from argos or something it's no real in between i don't know maybe i'm wrong i don't know um Following this blueprint, Corey and Rubio post positioned away as a travel company, not a luggage company. We're working to create a perfect version of everything people need to travel. See, Mr. Rubio said, two thousand luggage is only at the beginning. But what else can they do? Like what? Like pillows and stuff is to be on the plane. Um, to make their brand even more aspirational, away partnered with models and knit, and knit girls. Imagine, look, all these people didn't pay for anything, right? Carly Rose, Julia, Julia Roystein, Royfield, Rashida Jones. This is Rubia's wheelhouse. She managed social media strategy at Warby Parker and knew how to make a way hyper relevant. Uh, Corey, for her part, didn't have to work hard to project her special lifestyle. The CEO grew up in Ohio. She's rich with an indoor swimming pool and free dining rooms. She's gone to boarding school, then landed in Bloomingdale's executive development program while at Brand University. But for all her privilege, no one denied the executive's practical work ethic where Rubio's job seemed to involve glamorous travel and speaking events. Many employees stayed and never interacted with her. Corey was also in the office, was always in the office. She managed all the company's operations and was regularly online past 1 a.m. Bloody hell, woman. The CEO often v- v- facilitated between being funny and relatable to hypercritical and even cruel. Employees say she swore during interviews, cackled at people's jokes and took new hires to lunch, telling stories about her own mistakes. Once during an interview, a woman remarked that she was drawn to away because she was a millennial and it was a millennial friendly product. I'm millennial too, Corey said. Later, that same employee was told by the manager that Corey had referred to the team and bunch as millennial twats. <laughs> Corey was adamant. Uh, I quite like this woman, you know. She's a bit of a bitch, but I quite like her. <laughs> Corey was adamant that clear feedback was critical to employees' growth. She was blunt when she didn't agree with someone and encouraged managers not to shy away from harsh criticism, which is great. Erica, who managed a small team, questioned whether the strategy actually worked. It didn't feel like I was helping my direct reports grow. Uh, again, that's being a bit too soft. I think the direct feedback and stuff is something that we don't get too often. People sometimes sugarcoat the positives and the negatives too often, and it doesn't help the bottom dollar or the overall company to grow. So I think being radical candor, radical honesty is the way to go forward. I think, and especially in a fast moving industry like startups, you can't really risk or you can't really um, gamble on not hurting someone's feelings in that regard you have to go on the front foot you have to make sure people know when they stepped wrong 
or did the wrong thing or didn't approach it in the quote unquote right way so that you can kind of go back to the drawing board and come back again in order to kind of in order to kind of make the team grow because one thing i've noticed about startups even though it can get quite frantic it can get quite tense as soon as you win all those arguments are forgotten about all the falling outs are forgotten about you share a drink you have a burger or something you have a slice of pizza and everyone's cool again but in those moments of preparation of executing you really do need people to be honest and kind of speak up and speak you know straight about things really i would say um Da, da, da. when the photo when the photo team took suitcases to a, to a shoot in the hamptons and brought them back banged up and covered in sand an employee who started that week was blamed for the unacceptable error and called out publicly on snack the bags had eventually made their way to customers and executives were furious it would have just been a co-worker pulling them aside and saying this isn't cool erica says they felt like they were publicly out in the situation so that everybody could follow along but that was come on if you if they have a practice in if they have a standard in place where if you take a bag on shoot you have to make sure it comes back in a particular condition you don't want to throw away stock that's fair right and if you make that mistake or it's been happening again and again and again because again there's no context here. you don't know how many times they've been warned about it. you don't know how many times it's been made public and it's taken attention it's like when you go to startups and the toilet or the kitchen is a complete mess sometimes calling it out in public it's a bit annoying and a bit embarrassing but it's always good to make everyone aware that this is a standard this is not acceptable and everyone should kind of step up that's okay isn't it Corey often framed her critique in terms of core company values thoughtful customer obsessed it- iterative empowered accessible duh, duh. empowered employees didn't schedule time off when things were busy regardless of how much they'd been working customer obsessed people did often duh, duh. the intensity that promoted employees to form small groups chatting in texas about toxic company culture again smalling informed groups direct go to the founder and talk direct about it speak up and open speak speak up and all hands man don't be afraid especially if it's causing you to go home and cry into your pillow or, or you know sob to your partner and stuff or punch a wall it's not worth it you should be able to speak up and if they let you go it's not the right place to work at anyway do you know what i mean you should be able to speak up about it um but even this uh, seemed like it could get, it could get them in trouble from the beginning Corey and rubio had banned direct messages on slack for anything related to work which is strange or ost- sustainably this was supposed to make the culture more transparent over the course of our career journey. How can that? That's such a backwards way to lead, isn't it? No, no direct message on Slack because we want you to be front. Um, what you call it? Honest with us, face to face. That's only going to make me not say nothing. Like it's a, it's just a counterintuitive way to do things. Um, transparency seemed to be like a pretense to correlate to micromanage and exert control. Marjorie's employees felt silenced by the cutthroat environment. Ironically, Corey described Ruby as her work wife when the pair had worked in Warby Parker. Was also nice about relationship is that she also lean on each other to complain each uh, when the project wasn't going well. To Avery, this was just more a hypocrisy that way. The founders were allowed to complain to one another in private, but employees were expected to have an almost every custom every conversation in public you're joining a movement oh, i hate that bit here's the one in summer 2017 lauren joined the way as a customer experience associate she was one year out of college thrilled at the prospect of working at a brand she'd call she's seen all over the instagram at the time her company had around 50 employees the energy was light and support supportive she recalls a salary which was around forty thousand for customer support executive jesus christ a good 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 wage was a lot well, it wasn't a lot to live on. Oh, of course, in New York, I assume, right? But it was also out of the ordinary for someone just starting out in New York City. Lauren's job was to answer customer calls and emails, getting the queue of customers in cries down to zero. On a busy day, Lauren and her coworkers answered 40 to 40 phone calls in front of 100 emails each. From the beginning, Corey and Rubio were masterful at getting these young employees hyped up about their jobs. You're joining a movement. Uh, they would say everyone wants to be part of this. <laughs> they went long hours and bonded over crazy stories, intoxicated by the energy in the company. Lauren's manager, Zandy Payson, a woman who'd risen through the ranks, led the customer experience organization. That's always a good plant they do, right? They always get a manager in place that's kind of like, oh, she was a weekend employee and she's now the managing you guys to kind of rev you up, uh, give you more salary and obviously un- un- unlimited amounts of alcohol. But bloody hell, man. Crazy! Um, when Corey needed the team to stay late, Payson would send Slack messages on her behalf, infusing her sensitive ways values. What she would say things like, "I'll be working late tonight. Dinner is here for anyone who can stay and work beside me." I mean, leave it to you to. Oh, that's so manipulative. I'll be working late tonight. Dinner is here if any of you can work beside me. I mean, leave it if leave if you have to, but I have to stay. Lauren's teammate Caroline says her messages were long and loving. 
but they were manipulative. If she didn't, if she didn't hear from you, she just contact you directly, asking for verbal confession. You could work. <laughs> I love it. This woman's a warm, a fucking psycho. Um, as a holiday request approached, the team had to work around the clock to keep up the customers' demand. In December, Caroline was wrapping up at work at one a.m. when she saw Slack messages from Payson saying, "Okay, everyone, take a photo of your computer in bed when you get home." Here's mine. She's sitting at the bed wearing a face mask, still working. The queue of unanswered customers' emails kept growing. The team was just too small to keep up lauren and caroline uh, were working on weekends often eating dinner at midnight they told us just to keep pushing <laughs> ah this is a madness man this makes me look because it's so mad you so much of uh all the startups that works like just absolute scumbaggery then on december 31st new year's day man, just before new year's eve we meant to be out there getting caned and just drowning yourself in alcohol patient sent him a message saying happy new year's eve uh she began and then laid out two scenarios either they could work take the day off as planned and the team would even fall more behind or they could each work six hours and get a month off as a reward i i'm taking that day off i'm sorry i don't, I don't want i don't want a month off that i haven't got in my hands yet that's not going to come either the, that month off that they're that they're telling you you're going to get is never going to happen either if they're always going to be how are they going to give everyone a month off does that make any sense they're going to cycle it in so you're going to wait what six months to get your month off like now nah, i'll take the new year's eve I'm not reading that entire email. But yeah, the whole article is there for you to check out. It's very long, very thorough. And again, it just goes to show just how toxic startups can be. But I'm not surprised, really. Startups are like that, in it? Standard procedure. So make sure you are aware of what you're getting into. If if you're, if the founders at your startup are toxic, you owe them the benefit of the doubt. No, you owe them enough to kind of speak up in public about it. I don't think these private Slack channels do anyone any favors. But in general, I'm happy to see this get blasted out in public. And I'm also quite relieved that it's not a male toxic environment because this would be even worse i'm glad that now we're seeing that toxic toxicity in startups exists regardless of the gender it's just the way the, the companies are set up that kind of breeds this sort of environment um so yeah um hopefully this kind of leads to some change and again if you're on a way luggage uh, employee out there keep strong man keep strong because it sounds like you guys are working in absolute hell man literally living hell <laughs> um let's move on from that one well, i've been talking about that for ages isn't it um Oh, this one I talked about before. Um, Nike, I think, no, so Suprema finally um, aged me out of the collection. Um, I, I didn't think this would happen. I didn't think this would be a thing. But judging by this new Supreme collection with Nike, I've finally been priced out of wearing Supreme. And I think the model is a good example of it. So this is a new collaboration that Supreme has done with Nike. I've got here on the screen. Um, it's got Octavian is actually modeling it. Let's quickly read through the actual text. I think it's quite... Um, illuminating on how the overall project came together but yeah i think i've been, I've been priced out of it. i think for the most part i haven't worn supreme in years i probably got about six or seven pieces left from them anyway um it's kind of you know not the stuff that i kind of wear day to day anymore um i kind of feel ridiculous wearing it at the age i am at now but that collection definitely this collection anyway this night collection definitely told me that maybe um they've moved on and they don't want us to be their customers anymore let's see if i can get up on the screen here if it's going to load up in time come on hurry up oh it's taking ages where is this come on load 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 what's happening here okay let's just take this off the screen Let's go here, Supreme New York News. Let's see if it loads up now. Come on, son. I think maybe it might be my internet or maybe it's my... Uh, my lack of RAM on this computer is maybe affecting it as well. Let's see if I can load this up here. Okay, let's get this up here. Supreme is loaded up there. Click on the archive. Let's quickly read this through the text. That's all I want to do. Read through the text. That's it. Nothing else, okay? Let's hopefully it loads up. Let's get maybe get rid of some of these screens here. Hopefully that helps to kind of alleviate some of the pressure from the actual thing itself. Let's see if that works out. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see if that works out there. Is it working? Can you see this on the screen? No. Nothing is working, is it? It's not happening. Okay, let's get this off there. It doesn't matter. We'll just talk about it regardless anyway. So Supreme has kind of phased me out. Which is sad to see. How sad, really, isn't it? There was, again, talking about the old Crooked Tongues days and the old streetwear days, Supreme again was the introduction to that kind of level of streetwear. It kind of introduced you to other bits of fashion as well. It was kind of a good stepping stone for most kids coming up. But I always imagined it would be the brand that would kind of live with me up until my old age. But I think the fact that Supreme has blown up and become this massive cultural 
behemoth, right? An absolute monster of a brand, uh, a brand now that essentially has probably um, delivered on their message of sort of kind of connecting with youth culture the worldwide, especially with the expansion into Europe. Um, kids all over the world basically view Supreme as the kind of barometer of what's cool. Um, it's sort of essentially had to double down and really hone in on kind of directing his voice at a kind of hyper niche, hyper direct or hyper young audience, which probably explains why people like a Brendan who who does Noah and why someone like an Angela who does Away suddenly had left Supreme and kind of sweet parts is new because they weren't necessarily trying to speak to the same audience anymore. They went to speak to maybe a broader set of people, uh, maybe an older set of people. But Supreme, what they do really well which other companies have kind of failed at is that they double down on what they do and they just focus in hard on it. They don't stray. They don't try to appeal to the older folk. They know what their bread and butter is kind of, where their bread and butter is laid and that is directly at the feet of, you know, kids from the ages of 13 upwards. And this collaboration with Nike, modeled by Octavian, definitely speaks to it. Just the styling of it, the way he wears his hats, the fact that he's a young, up and coming, you know, hip hop superstar is also a kind of, a pointed direction as in you know they're kind of dumping someone like me an old frumpy guy <laughs> out to pastures and essentially directing exactly at the youth out there and even even just the rings like, they've got nike rings right i would never wear that in a million years like i, I felt ridiculous wearing sovereigns back in the day imagine wearing a, a ring with fucking nike switch you couldn't get more chavy you couldn't get more youth you couldn't get more corny than a nike ring but again if you're a kid and you're 16 and you see a nike supreme ring Woohoo! And it's it's got some gold in it. You'll be all over it like a shotty. So yeah, this is quite cool. I like how it looks. Again, it's not for me. It's definitely aged me out. I think Octavian looks amazing in the actual shoot itself. I love the I love the the sweatpants or the leather sweatpants that are kind of in that weird Gucci colorway thing that they always do. The red, yellow, and green, which is maybe more of a Rastafarian thing, I'd imagine. Right? I really love that. I think the 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 top looks really cool. Uh, the baseball shirt thing i'm not really a big fan i've not really been a f i've not really been a big fan of wearing like american sportswear pieces i've got like a hockey top that i wear from time to time but again i quite i feel quite ridiculous wearing that too i'm not i wasn't really a big fan of jerseys baseball shirts hockey tops i just think that american thing done outside of america just looks a bit weird and ridiculous and um, i prefer when people wear like you know uh, football jerseys but this track suit here the white one looks beautiful especially with the rings on this shoot and just in general, just a really good collection. You've got leather bags as well, nice hodls. Just a very, very, very well done collection. But definitely something that is definitely geared more towards the younger kids out there. Um, I think anyone above the age of 28 that's wearing this will feel very dumb or very young or very ridiculous. Uh, maybe this top without the hood looks a bit more grown up. You could probably style this a bit better without the hood on it. But again, it's just not the most... Yeah, just... yeah. It's very young, isn't it? It's very, very young. Big logos emblazoned everywhere. Massive Nike, a box logo on the back. Like you couldn't, you can't mistake that. Not for being supreme, right? Um, does the hoodie have supreme on the back of it as well, or just on the top? Maybe just on the top in it. Yeah, I think just the top of it. But yeah, um, that's out now. I think it's coming out. It came out yesterday. I think didn't it already? The sweatpants are quite cool. I like the sweatpants. The sweatpants are having were awesome, and obviously the hodo is very nice as well. But again, wearing that hodo and going to the gym is probably not a good idea. Probably get jacked. And the sunglasses are really cool as well. And but the night with the the rings, the rings are ridiculous, isn't it? You you can't wear those really, innit? Even the sunglasses with the massive Nike and the oh, shit. there's like three log there's two logos on that on that um yeah on the sunglasses. There's one here where it says Nike and one just towards the back where it says Supreme. That's a bit too much for me. But yeah. Big up Supreme again. Um sad to see it, but you know, they they phased me out, man. I'm 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 not included in Supreme's target demographic anymore. Sad to see, but what can you do anyway that's an hour it's actually an english show one hour has passed thanks so much for tuning in um it's your boy agostino as per usual um if you're watching via the podcast app or if you're listening via the podcast app leave me a five-star review if you're watching via youtube smash that like button click subscribe um if you want to see more stuff regarding myself click my website xrozinga.com you can contact me via the contact me section you can check out my dj dates check out my blog check out my photography check out the flyers of design and all the other good stuff uh, like i said before i'm gonna be launching my store very very soon with some exclusive products so definitely make sure you check out that and i'll see you guys again very very soon um if i don't see you again tomorrow and if you're crossing the road make sure you look left and right make sure you drink loads of water and keep yourself hydrated and i'll see you guys again very soon take care bye peace Ooh.